Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. So the final champion of the new expansion has been revealed, and that is Orn. So I'm going to take a look at Orn himself, the followers, the mechanics, all kinds of stuff, all cards related to Orn, so we can try to theorize the potential power of the champion, the cards, and also maybe another deck that he can be played with. So I'm super excited to get into it. So we're going to start off with the Orn video. Here we go. Orn commands the forge. He does, yep. Forge, 5 mana, slow speed, uh, Freljord card, okay. Forge an ally and deal 1 to all units, do it again, create Orn in deck. So this is Orn's champion spell. Grant an ally 1-1, one, one. if the ally is equipped, grant it to their item instead. So if they are equipped, the equipment will gain 1-1. One, one. So if the unit dies, the equipment comes back to your hand, probably with the buffs, so that you can apply it to other units. That's pretty cool, pretty strong. Also, it's a pseudo board clear, so that's good. Forge an ally, that makes sense. Somebody hold my bear. You're welcome. Forge an ally for one. That's pretty good. That's a plus one plus one. We'll make it sturdy. Right to work. An iron will must be forged. Okay. Hold while I smith. Mm-hmm. Seems good. Orn, here we go. Oh yeah, that's um that's a big weapon. Stand on your own two feet. Scout attack. That's a big orn. That's like a Nautilus right there. Now this is what good looks like. The God of the Forge, you got it. That's a cool level up animation. So he's a 7 mana 5-5 five, five with tough. Um, This is his level up form, right? Play, equip me with an exact copy of an ally's equipment or the strongest equipment from hand. So you get to choose. If you have nothing on the board, you can choose something in hand and equip it. Wow. Exact copy. That's pretty cool. Attack, forge me twice. So gain uh, plus 2, plus 2. Then summon an attacking Spirit of the Ram with my stats. That is massive for attack turn 7. So yeah, that's probably going to be ideal. Playing on evens, coming out one turn slower and getting this attack value one turn slower is actually a big deal. So he wants to attack on odds, uh, attack on 7 right when he's summoned, and that's pretty good if he actually gets this off, if he doesn't get vengeance or anything like that. This is actually an incredible amount of value if he's already leveled. He's very strong. And that's a scout attack. He gets to attack again. Here comes my molten friend. Oh, and the ram has overwhelm. That's a big deal. Dedge. They're at three HP. Literal. Holy. I made this hammer. It was so good I named it Hammer. <laughs> okay, Orn. I have rekindled the hearth. Okay, he's just getting massive. My boy, it means nothing anymore. More scouts. Is on the job. Secrets hidden by frost. Forge it up. Your followers know the truth, Ice Witch. Deal some damage, forge twice. Oh, that's pretty good with Braum. Yeah, I like that. It's also pretty good with Scar Grounds. That's just a big ram. They're just so over dead. Look at that, minus 18. All right, so we can take a look at that. Orin's Forge, three mana landmark. When I'm summoned or round start, create the fleeting Time and Dedication, which is the uh, one mana focus speed spell down there in the center. Forge an ally, so give plus one, plus one. That's pretty good. Uh, Orn in uh, pre-level form is a 4-4. Uh, he has tough. Okay, equip me an exact copy, so he still gets to do that. Sure. That's pretty good. So when he's leveled up, he gets the Spear of the Ram, which is at the top right here. Four mana, 1-1. One, one. Uh, copies the stats, has Overwhelm and Ephemeral. Okay. Three mana, 3-3. Three, three. Adept Weaponsmith. Play, forge an ally. So nice little bonus there. Very combat focused archetype. This kind of reminds me of Jax. And I think since Jax is doing a lot of equipping and auto equipping, I think forging is actually a pretty good idea to do day one. Some nice little Jax Orn synergy here. I'm liking that. Two mana, one four, wizened smith. When I'm summoned, create a time and dedication. So we can generate this card from not only the landmark, but also the unit. That's awesome. That's very strong. Um, uh, oh wait, it doesn't look like it's uh, fleeting. Uh, from the Wizened Smith. Create a time and dedication in hand. So you just get to keep the time and dedication from Wizened. It's fleeting if it comes from Orn's Forge, though, so that is important to keep in mind. 
Uh, five mana, five, five, Hearth Blood Mender. Play, forge an ally, and heal it, and your Nexus three. Pretty good little heal for uh, uh, Frawly Ward there. And then Weaponsmith's Apprentice, who's behind me right now. One mana, one, one. The first time you equip an ally, also forge it. So that's really good value right there. That's huge stats. All right, so let's take a look at the other cards that we have missed and have not seen yet. So we caught up on Jax last time. Let's start with Quietus. One mana slow speed Shadow Isle spell. Kill a unit with two or less power or destroy a unit's equipment. Now, this is going to be a must run in every Shadow Isles. I think this is probably one of the best Shadow Isles cards ever. It's a one mana calling strike if the unit has two or less power. Uh, or you can just kill a unit's equipment. So we have anti-equipment in Shadow Isles and it's just good. Like this is awesome. You can hit like Ezreal with this. That's pretty high value. You can hit a lot of other things that get summoned, other problematic cards. If you combine this with Frenzied Skitter, then you can also hit things that normally have three attack, right? So you, we just have a Culling Strike essentially in Shadow Isles. Very, very good card. Next, Malefic Spear. Three mana, two, one, gives something fearsome. If an ally died this round, I cost two less. So it's one mana, plus two, plus one, and fearsome. That's pretty good, especially if you throw this on like Stygian or something that only has conditional fearsome. So yeah, you'd probably run this in so some sort of like fearsome aggro deck. You can run it on Wraithcaller. That sounds good. Wraithcaller can be what, a six, four? with fearsome now that's pretty scary so yeah i'd like to see this in um some kind of aggro mid-range fearsome decks i think this actually has a good spot in there because it costs two less if an ally died so just playing this for one is really good value next we have tarash and the darkened halberd so halberd summons tarash to play me kill an ally you must spend 10 mana to play me to for tarash okay so it's one mana two two you have to kill an ally so this is pretty good with like a uh, self slay deck so Callista, thresh Nasus, that kind of stuff. Things that play the cards that want to be killed. Uh, you can equip this, kill something, and then it's a plus two, plus two bonus. That's absolutely massive. And it's only one mana, so this is a great equipment actually with synergy. And you may spend 10 mana to play me as Tarash. Tarash is a 10, 10, 10, fearsome. Each round, the first time I attack, fill your attackers with revived ephemeral copies of the strongest followers you've slain. Holy, this is like old harrowing. So you're able to revive enemy followers too that you've slain that's kind of funny this is a really cool card so i mean this is a, a really solid weapon i think it's two two one mana you can play this in thresh nasus you can play it with Callista, and then you have tarash sometimes as a top end win con that's pretty good keeper of the box two mana two two cultist so this can be put into cane decks uh fearsome two mana two two fearsome that's a pretty good stat line once you've equipped an ally this game grant me lifesteal so it's a little bit more defensive actually it's a fearsome with a two two body and lifesteal conditionally that's pretty okay i like it gift of the hearth blood five mana burst speed heal your nexus four grant all allies and equipment in your deck one one and draw one of them so this is a tutor as long as you're only running one copy of either a unit or one copy of a um, or I guess three copies of a unit, three copies of a weapon, right? If you're only running one thing, then you get to draw. So this is pretty cool for, like, Fiora. This is pretty cool for, like, uh, the Fizz Starlet Seer deck that has come out in the past. I guess minus Starlet and just run Fizz, and then you can keep playing that kind of stuff. But, I mean, you know, I think we still run Starlet in that thing. But yeah, it's a pretty interesting card. I think we're going to see some uh, interesting champion tutor synergy with this, and this could actually come out. Dude, Freljord Fiora is kind of cracked right? That's the only unit we play in that entire deck. The rest is Brittle Steals and Demacia Combat Tricks and Strikes. So, hey, that's uh, that's a Fiora card right there if I've ever seen one. Next, we have a Bone Club. 5 mana 4-4 four, four basic equipment. This is a uh, a pack filler that we call this. It's just a 5-4-4, four, four, probably not going to see play. Demacian Steel, 1 mana 1-1. One, one. Uh, another pack filler. This one might see play because it's pretty cheap, but it's pretty meh. Uh, time of Dedication, we saw that. We saw the Wait, they changed the name. This used to be called Wizened something in the Orn reveal. Wizened Smith? Now it's Flavored Artisan. Yo, why are you changing the names on me? You're actually tripping me out. But yeah, that's a good card. Uh, Death Weapon Smith, we saw. Uh, we saw this, we saw that. Combat Cook, this is new. Yo, it's War Chefs. Let's go. War Chefs on a new card. 4 mana 2 2. Uh, this is a dual region follower, so it is a Demacia and Freljord. Combat Cook, when, I, when I'm summoned, I improvise and forge me. That's pretty awesome. I love that. That is really cool. I like that guy. It's a weapon master, so it can be put in Jack's decks. What is this top end card? 8 mana, 8-8, eight, eight, Rock Colossus, Freljord, Overwhelm. The first time I'm equipped to create a copy of me in hand, grant it the equipment stats. Whoa, it's like Thrumming Swarm from Sharima, but different. <laughs> That's kind of cool. 
Um, yeah, I don't know if it's going to see play, but it's kind of neat. If he can generate it from something else, then it might see play. But like just running an 8-8 in um, Frelly Ward? Why not just play Trindomir? Why not just play Alpha Wild Claw and then like Battle Fury it, right? <laughs> That'll do the same kind of job as this thing. But hey, it's kind of neat. Forge, we saw, we saw, we saw all the orange stuff. And it looks like that is it. So I am fully caught up on the new expansion and I'm really excited to play the new stuff. Looks like Orange Jax is going to be a really cool day one deck for me. So yeah, I'm definitely going to try that. And then also, I think Shadow Isles got some really awesome cards. I think my Mono SI, if you guys remember from like last year, a couple years ago, I played Mono SI for the longest time. It's Elise and Hecarim. I think Quietus is a really good card for that. Keep up the mid-range pressure, have some nice cheap removal. Also, it's anti-equipment, so it just kind of does all. And I think Fearsome Aggro actually has a place to come back with the Malefic Spear. I think it's a very strong equipment. Very cool. And that's it for this one. Please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining. It really helps me out. I'll be releasing more deck profiles, guides, and gameplay highlights in the near future. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters!